Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you both for uh, testifying. This is a very important issue for the country, and I think we've had a good discussion. Uh, number one, I, I completely concur with the idea that American troops should not be left behind in Iraq without legal protections. It's not fair to them. Uh, to say that the Iraqi legal system is mature is being gracious. Uh, if an American soldier were accused of rape anywhere in Iraq, I don't think they would get a fair trial. So at the end of the, end of the day, uh, Iraq has a long way to go on the legal side, and I think a long way to go on other sides. Uh, my concern is that I've never bought into the idea that the impasse was getting uh, the parliament to approve an immunity agreement. Uh, and I'll just give you one vignette. I went over with Senator McCain and Senator uh, Lieberman in May to talk to the prime minister about a follow-on force, and I was discussing with him that no American politician, Republican or Democrat, would accept a follow-on force without legal protections. And as we were talking about it, he says, well, how many people are you you're talking about? What's your number? I turned to Ambassador Jeffries and uh, General Austin and said, you haven't given them a number? He says, no, we're still working on that. That is in May. So let's, let's get into this General Dempsey, 16, 10, 5 cascading. Is it your testimony that we were proposing 16,000 to the Iraqis and they said no? Then we came back with 10 and they said no. Then we came back five and they said no. Then it got to be zero. No, that, the, uh, that's not what I testified to. Well, what caused the cascading effect? Why did we, the commanders, General Austin told me, and I'll just tell you now because this is so important. He told me he thought we needed 19,000. And I said, Lloyd, that's probably going to be more than the market can bear. I said that because I'm concerned about American politics too. Then the numbers were around 15 to 16. Then we started about 10, came to 10, and nobody got below 10. So I know what General Austin had on his mind. At the end of the day, General Dempsey, you're right, it's about the missions you want that determines the numbers. And we've gone through it pretty well. Iraq doesn't have the intel capacity we do. We need to make sure they have better intel. They don't have a, uh, an Air Force. We need embedders. We need trainers. We need CT. We need to referee the current air dispute. I think 10 or 12 is, is what you need. Uh, at the end of the day, we're down to zero. And I guess my question is, is Iran comfortable with a democracy on their border in Iraq, Mr. Secretary Panetta? I, I, think, I think they're very nervous about having a democracy on their well, border. Let me tell you what the Speaker of the Iraqi Parliament, a Sunni, Mr. Najaf, said. Iraq now suffers from points of weakness. If neighboring countries see that Iraq is weak and incapable of protecting its borders and internal security, then definitely there will be interference. This interference does not exist now. He was talking about how Iran would step up their efforts to destabilize Iraq if we all left. Do you agree that is a more likely scenario? That they're doing it now, they're only going to do it more if we don't have anybody there. I, I think there will be a continuing threat. I think that uh, the reality is that uh, the Iraqis do not want to have Iraq exert that kind of influence well, you in know, their country. Th th now, if the Sunni Speaker of the Parliament is worried about that, is there any doubt the Kurds want us there? If they're up the Kurds, they'd be 50,000 American troops in Kurdistan. Do you agree with that? So we know the Sunnis are worried about this, and we know the Kurds would have 50,000 if we would agree to put them there, and I wouldn't agree to that, but they're very welcoming of U.S. troops. So I I'm getting a little bit concerned that all the blame on the Iraqi uh, political system is maybe not quite fair. Secretary Panetta, you're a politician in another life. Would it be a political problem for President Obama to announce this year that we're going to keep 15,000 people in Iraq past 2012? Did that ever get considered in this administration? Did anybody ever talk about the numbers changing because the Democratic base would be upset if the President broke his campaign promise? Did that ever? Not, not in any discussions that I participated in. You think it ever happened anywhere? Do you think anybody in the White House ever wondered about the political effect of, of having troops in Iraq on the 2012 election? 
you, you talk openly about the Iraqis having political problems. You don't think there's any politics going on on our side? Let me ask you about Afghanistan, General Dempsey. Did any commander recommend that all the surge forces be pulled out by September 2012? I, I honestly don't know, Senator, but... Uh, well, uh, let me tell you, the testimony is clear. No option was presented to the President in July to re recover all surge forces by September 2012, and you put General Allen in a terrible spot the administration has. And I think it's no accident that the troops are coming home two months before his election in Afghanistan. And if you believe that to be true, as I do, I don't think it's an accident that we got to zero. Now, at the end of the day, we're at zero. Do you think the people in Camp uh, Ashraf, do you think they're going to get killed? What's going to happen to them? The, uh, as you know, Senator, the State Department is leading an effort to uh, ensure that uh, work can with you, the Iraqi Can you government. tell the, the people back here that the likelihood of their friends and family being killed has gone up greatly if there are no American forces up there policing that problem? I won't say anything to those people because I'm not involved in the Fair outcome. I asked Admiral Mullen, your predecessor, what is the risk of an Arab-Kurdish conflict over the oil reserves around Kirkuk in terms of a conflict if we're not present? He said it was high. Do you agree with that? Uh, I might have said moderate because of my own personal contacts with uh, both the Kurds and the Iraqis. So you believe that there's a moderate risk, not a high risk, if there are no U.S. forces policing the Kurd Arab borderline disputes and the Kirk issue? I do. I'd, ra I'd like to take some time to uh, articulate why I believe that, but if you'd like me to take that for the record, I'd be happy to I, do I, so. I would. Now, do you believe it's smart for the United States not to have counterterrorism forces is it in our national security interest not to have any counterterrorism forces in Iraq? It's in our national security interest to continue pressure on al-Qaeda wherever we find them, either by, by ourselves or through partners. But do you think the counterterrorism problem in Iraq is over? I do not. Okay. Secretary Brennan, you've been great about this. You said there are a thousand al-Qaeda in Iraq, and I know in your old job that you're very worried that they're going to reconstitute. So will you do the best you can to convince the Iraqis, and I tell you what, I'm willing to get on a plane and go back myself, that they would benefit from a counterterrorism partnership with the United States? I, I've, already, I've made that clear time and time again. And they just tell you they don't, they're not concerned about that. Uh, what, they, what they tell me is that, uh, you know, they, they are concerned about that. They have, you know, they, they obviously have their forces that uh, are dealing with that. Is it your testimony the Iraqis would not have 3,000 U.S. forces? They, they don't want any U.S. forces at all. They don't, they don't see, they're not willing to expend the political capital to get this agreement done because they just don't see a need for U.S. forces. Is that the Iraqi position that... They've come to the point in their political military life that they just don't need us at all. I, th I think the the problem was that uh, it was very it was very difficult to try to find out exactly when when you say the Iraqi position what exactly the Iraqi position was at that What's point. What's the Kurdish uh, position in Iraq about U.S. forces? Well, I don't think there's any question they would like to. So, have what's the no Sunni question? Speaker of the Parliament's position about U.S. forces? I think the same. Well, when I was with Prime Minister Maliki in May, the next day he announced that he would accept a follow-on force if other parties would agree. So, how did this fall apart? I heard, I heard the same, I heard the same statements and read the same statements. But in what? But, but, but the problem is in the negotiations that involved Ambassador, the Ambassador that in, involved uh, General Austin. Uh, and, it, you know, as in those discussions, they never came to the point where they said, we want this many troops here. Well, I can tell you, and I, I've taken my time, I can tell you in May, they had no number given to them by us. They were in the dark early as late as May about what we were willing to commit to, to Iraq. So this is a curious outcome when you got Sunnis and Kurds on the record and the Prime Minister of uh, of Iraq saying he would accept uh, a follow-on force if the others agreed. I don't know who does the negotiation for the United States, but if I had three people saying those things, I thought I could get it over the finish line. But 
We are where we are, and thank you for your service.